Joining us now is the mouth of the South and college football expert, Paul Feinbaum. Thank you for being it's here. It's great to be here. <laughs> great to see you, Paul. Is the somebody missing? Oh, you filled that seat just fine. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> let's get to some college football talk. The first full weekend of the season is in the book, so let's play a little take it or leave it. I'll bring up some big storylines, and you guys will tell me if you're buying or selling. All right, first, Louisville kept it close with Notre Dame in the first half before the Irish pulled away in the second half. And, Paul, you had some strong comments about Notre Dame <laughs> on, your show, on the show yesterday. So take it or leave it. Uh, the Irish are not a contender for the playoff. I don't think they are. I mean, they're a good football team. They are not going to get in the playoffs, and you saw the reason a minute ago. They have to go to Georgia. They're not winning in Athens, Georgia. Georgia beat them two years ago uh, late in the fourth quarter. And, and if that wasn't bad enough, they have to go to Michigan. Yeah, I know Notre Dame fans think they have the superiority deal against Michigan. Not this time, not in Ann Arbor, and not at the big house. They, they play SC, Stanford. Their schedule is going to catch up with them. I don't, I don't look at that as such a – listen, I defer to the college football well, thank expert, you. but I, don't, I think they'll be a contender. Like, they're ranked ninth, right? So you got three spots. Everyone knows the top three. After that, that would leave um, – are they one of the six other teams that might do it? I look at their schedule. I don't see – other than at Georgia, which they should lose, I don't see any other games where I go, they are going to lose that game. If they get a little lucky, if the ball bounces their way, if, it's, if they have that kind of season, they could end this season with one loss. I could see it. And then they're a playoff contender at least. Here, here's the problem, Max, and you make a moderately eloquent point. <laughs> I like your style, Paul. <laughs> this is a run-of-the-mill run top football they're, schedule. They're, they're a good program. I think they could easily be 10-2. And and, but w what if they were 11-1? and one? They do not play a conference game. Why? Because Notre Dame's too good to be in the ACC in football. Now, they're in the ACC in everything else, and they get the money, and they get all the, the glory, but they're superior because they have their own league, network. They're, they're, they are – Notre Dame. And in my opinion, and I hope the opinion of the college football playoff, if they lose one game, forget about them. They got in last year because they were undefeated, but they didn't have to do what Georgia and other teams did. They didn't have to play Alabama in a conference tournament. So what was your controversial statement? Well, I mean I, I mean, I said here yesterday on first take, you were you were listening, here, yeah. uh, that they don't, that they they should be disqualified. I, I was kidding. Someone thought Talking it was about the serious. beating they took but last you, year. But you know what? I may change it to being serious after all this because I just I just it irks me that they can get in without having Clemson played, beat that, breaks that, off that of everyone. Though. And by the way, had they had they if they were in the ACC, they would have played Clemson last year, and they did play Clemson, and they lost by twenty. Seven points. Uh, uh, excuse me, but Alabama lost by 28 points. We're not talking about Alabama. Uh, <laughs> all right, guys, let's move on <laughs> to the next topic, all right? So Bo Nix and Auburn come from behind to stun Justin Herbert and Oregon on Saturday night. Take it or leave it. Justin Herbert is being overrated. I, I, I think some of this is overkill. Uh, Justin Herbert didn't lose that game. His coach lost that game. Mario Cristobal is a really good coach. Max, remember last year? He completely choked away the Stanford game that they had won. He, did, he couldn't manage the clock, and he couldn't manage it against Auburn. They should have put Auburn away, but, but he, he got very conservative on third down. On fourth down, he tries to run against the best defensive line in the country. Justin Herbert, I still think, is the same quarterback he was entering the game, but Oregon is gone as far as the college football playoff. I agree with you about Justin Herbert. That's why I'm going to take it, his being overrated. And by the way, I hate saying this about a college kid. You know, because, yes, they, they sign up. As you know, you sign up for national attention, and people will be commenting on you. But, like, it, it's, a, it's a bit much, a student athlete, after all, to say overrated, underrated. I never feel right about it. And yet, Justin Herbert was, by some, going to be the presumptive number one overall right. pick last year. And he's back at school for another year because that did not come close to happening. And so far, he, he's very talented. You can see it. He has the kind of prototypical stuff you need nowadays. But if he's the same guy as he was last year, Paul, then you got to take him being a little overrated. It, I don't think so. But I, he just doesn't have a lot of compliments around him. If, if you put Justin Herbert as a quarterback at Alabama with, with four bona fide All-American potentials at, at wide receiver, I think he would have looked a lot better. A lot of one, one, one of his, I'm not making excuses for Oregon. I really don't care if Oregon wins a game or loses a game. I mean, I, where is Oregon anyway? <laughs> but the point is that... Uh, those uniforms, everything started yeah, turning around. Great. Okay, <laughs> go Nike. But I, I still think uh, he's a very good quarterback, and I think we'll be talking about him in April at the draft. Yeah. All right, let's talk about Alabama right now. Okay, so Tua, he had a big game in Bama, but the win was against Duke. So take it or leave it. Tua needs Bama more than Bama needs Tua? 
I think Tua does need Bama. I mean, Bama, Bama was there long before Tua had heard of the University of Alabama. And again, if, it, if Tua had not uh, done what he had done, he had done, Galen Hurts would still be the quarterback at Alabama, and he's doing quite nice, thank you. So, uh, Tua is phenomenal. Uh, he may be the number one player in the country. He may not be. He may be the number one draft choice, but, but Bama is going to be okay with or without Tua. Now, a win against mighty Duke football, who produced Daniel Jones, by the way, I when did. everyone else was saying the Giants shouldn't take him. I alone said, good pick. Or maybe it was the opposite. I forgot exactly. It doesn't matter. Let's not show. keep score. The point is. Actually, in this case, Alabama needs him more. And I'll tell you why, Paul. I think especially now that the linebacker's gone, especially the licking they took in the national title game last year from Clemson, especially the way I really think this year it will determine who is the dynasty in college football, who is the number one power. Not last year. That wasn't enough to pass Alabama everything that Saban and Alabama have done. But what Dabo Sweeney and Clemson are doing right now and Trevor Lawrence, I know he didn't look good week one, although tackle in the open field, a little Roethlisberger, Roethlisbergerian, Roethlisbergian. <laughs> anyway, the point is they need Tua to be special in Alabama. Paul, to overcome Clemson, they need Tua to show that stuff that he showed, you know, at, throughout his college career so far. Whoa, that dude's special. He's a winner. He makes the big play. When, if he's not that guy, I don't think Alabama could beat Clemson. Well, the one thing they, they don't need, Max, is Tua to get hurt. Because if Tua, for, heaven forbid, gets knocked out uh, of the lineup and can't play, then Alabama has no answer. They, they do not. His brother is the, is the third string quarterback. Uh, Mac Jones, I'm sure you have him on your Heisman list. He's the number two. So th that is the most critical part for Alabama. But they have uh, Jerry Judy may be the best player on Alabama's team. He is so good at wide receiver. And, and there are two or three other wide receivers. They have good running backs. The defense is another issue. Uh, losing Dylan Moses, when we talked about it last week as the story was breaking, it, you couldn't see that against Duke, but you will see it against Georgia, maybe Texas A&M, and ultimately against Clemson. All right, Paul Feinbaum, we, we appreciate your time here today and always your college football insights. And I love your just calm and poised demeanor. It's a different kind of voice to the show. We appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you. I, I, I could say something else about 